Hello, in this video we're going to derive a general formula based on Matt Parker's video. The video was the unexpected logic behind rolling multiple dice and picking the highest. And it's a, it's a must watch video. It was uh, on July 1st, 2022 and it's a home run as all of his videos are. I love his videos. I watch them all. In this video, he explores a question that was posed to him. In Dungeons and Dragons, you roll an inside a die, you observe the results, and then that's your play. Someone asked him, if you rolled it twice and took the maximum, how does that change the probabilities associated with the numbers? And that's what he investigated. A great video, took a geometric approach, very clever. But many of his comments around the formula, or around the video, ask for a general formula. Instead of rolling it twice, what if you roll it three times, or four times, or M times? And another one was, instead of taking the maximum, what if you take the minimum, or the middle value, or etc.? And so what we're going to do here is provide that very general formula that answers all those questions. But before we jump into it, Whenever you do something in generality, it can be pretty complex. So you need to develop some nomenclature around the problem to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So we let xi be a random variable, and it's the number on the die from the ith roll, right? And the number can be anywhere from 1 to n, and the index goes from 1 to m, meaning... Um, this so if we if we roll it once we call that value x1 if we roll it again that's x2 all the way up to xm m is how many times we rolled the dice so the index goes from 1 to m but the actual values that we observe are from 1 to n it's an inside a die so if we have these results they're in random order, they're identically distributed because we're using the same die, or maybe you have M die and you roll them all. But what if we sort these from smallest to largest? And that's what this represents. So the parentheses mean they've been sorted. So X in parentheses one means that's the smallest observation of these M observations. And then X2 would be the second smallest, you know, the twos in parentheses. XK would be the kth smallest, and XM would be the mp smallest. But since we only rolled it m times, that's also the largest. So these represent the sorted results from smallest to largest. And K is the index that we're going to use in parentheses for these sorted values. So K equals 1, that's the minimum. If K equals m, well, that's the largest. And so as a very quick example, if we have n equals 20, so it's a 20-sided die, we're rolling it three times, and we're looking at the, the uh, second sorted value. So that's the middle value. So if you sort them, 1, 2, 3, so, so 2 represents that middle value or the middle roll. So here's the general formula. So n represents the inside of die. m is the number of rolls. K is the kth largest value, you know, X sub parentheses K, that, that's the uh, value of the kth largest value. And of course, these values go from 1 to N, but it's sorted. Remember that XK, they're sorted from smallest to largest. And the formula is this. This is it. The probability that the kth largest value is x and remember x can go from one to nine or one to n right is this uh, sum so it's the sum from j equals zero to m minus k of m choose j n minus x over n raised to the j x over n raised to the m minus j minus this sum uh, it goes from zero to m minus k m choose j n plus one minus x over n x minus 1 over n m minus j where this binomial coefficient is you know it's m factorial divided by j factorial divided by m minus j factorial that's a, what's called a binomial coefficient uh, combi combinations m choose j 
And this is it. This is the general formula. Now let's go through a, a, a couple examples on the back side. Six examples. Let's let n equal 20. And that's the die that, that Matt was rolling in his example. m equals 2. So we're only rolling it twice. And k equals 2. So that's the largest value from our two rolls. And it's this. The probability that our largest value is equal to 20 is this sum. Now it goes from 0 to m minus k, but m and k are 2 so it's 0. So it's just j is 0 and that's a 1, uh, that's a 0 so that's a 1, this is a 1, so this sum is 1 and then minus and then this, uh, that's a 1, this is a 1 and this falls out to 19 over 20 squared. Well, and if you look at 1 minus this, that is the 0 0.0975 that was in Matt Parker's video. Okay, so now let's, uh, he also noted that when we looked at the maximum of two rolls on in, on in, inside a die, the, the probabilities were linear. You know, it became a straight line. And to generalize that, so if we if we have m rolls and we take the maximum of the m, so k is m, if we only roll it once, so we roll the one die, you know, every number is the probability is the same, so it's constant. If we roll it twice and then look at the maximum, which is what in Matt's Parker video we did, we know he noted that it was linear. And it's that's the case for any n when m is 2. It's always linear. When m is 3, the numbers or the results are quadratic. And when it's m, it's a m minus 1 order polynomial, and that's what it is. Now here's a question. Is 1 here, when we look at, uh, we roll 2 die and take the maximum, is this probability associated with this probability? And the answer is no. This is you roll the die once, and what's the probability you observe a 1? It's 1 over n. But to observe a 1 here, which means you, that's the maximum roll out of 2, you had to roll a 1 twice. And so that probability becomes much, much lower than this probability. Anyway, so the third example is uh, n equals 20, m equals 3, so we're going to roll it 3 times, k equals 2. So that's the middle value. Remember the values that x can take on are 1 to 20, right? So the probability that the middle value is x. So you could, you know, the probability that it's 1 or that it's 2, that it's 20. And you'd, you'd put that number in this formula here. And, and you do this sum from 0 to 1 minus this sum from 0 to 1, and that's it. Whatever it is, that's the results. So here, you might ask, what, you know, does our probability increase if we, if we increase the number of rolls? So let's say, in this example, we rolled it twice, and we wanted to see what the, the probability of a 20 was. That's 9%. So here, uh, inside a uh, twenty-sided die, we roll in it three times, taking the largest. Probability that we roll a twenty is uh, fourteen point two percent. If we have a twenty-sided die and we roll it four times, take the maximum. Probability that we roll a twenty, which means we roll the four die and look at the maximum. If the maximum is twenty, that's what this says that probability is 18 and a half percent, right? And then as you increase M and always look at the maximum, this probability goes to one, but you have to have a pretty large M. So you have to get out over a hundred rolls. So I think at a hundred M equal 100, it's, it's like 99.4 or 5% that you roll a 20, and that the maximum's a 20. And so it takes quite a bit of rolls, but it does increase in limit to one. 
So let's say we have a six-sided die. We're rolling them four times, and we're taking the minimum value. K equals one. So the values that we'll observe are one through six on each roll. So the probability that the minimum is equal to some value is this sum based on that formula. And then you can, if you were to sum this probability over, let x be one, and then find that probability, then two, then three, then four, then five, and six, and add all those up, that equals one, that sums to one. So this is a, a probability mass function. Okay, well, if anyone is further interested in this, this is a big area of statistics called order statistics. And specifically, it's called discrete order statistics. And I have two background videos, or three. Uh, one is called discrete order statistics, where we talk very in, in general about discrete order statistics and how to calculate them. And then I have, it's actually two other videos, but it's part two that deals with discrete order statistics. It's called SOA exam P. So that's an actuarial exam, the probability exam. It's sample problem 265 and parts one and two, if anyone is more interested in discrete order statistics. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.